Hi friends, this is Selvajan here. Welcome to my networking channel. Hope all are doing well and safe. And today let us discuss about the topic PVST. So what is PVST is a per VLAN spanning tree protocol which is Cisco proprietary. So what is per VLAN for each and every VLAN a separate instance of STP will be running. Assume there are 100 VLAN in a topology so there will be 100 instances of STP will be running. That is the purpose of per VLAN spanning tree. So what is CST is a common spanning tree protocol which calculates a single spanning tree for all VLAN. So if there are 100 VLAN there would there will be only a single instance of STP will be running for all this VLAN. So that is the difference between the CST and PVST. So now let us understand the PVST topology. So here I have connected three switches. Switch A, B and C and all are connected in means of trunk link. And switch A will be elected as a root switch, right? Because of the lowest priority or the lowest MAC address. And the corresponding ports are always a designated port. So a segment will have one designated and one root port. So this is a non-designated or we call it as a blocking port. So I have assigned VLAN 30 and 40, right? So both this VLAN 30 and 40, this will become the root switch. So what happened for both this VLAN, this will become the blocking for the non-designated port, right? So in case, if I'm using this as an expensive link, what happened? This link we are not going to utilize because this will become the blocking for both this VLAN. So also we can prevent such situation. So how we can prevent this? I can assign root switch for individual VLAN, right? For VLAN 30, I can assign switch A as a root switch and for VLAN 40, I can assign switch B as a root switch. So both this will be having the separate topology in the sense VLAN 30, this will become the designated port and for VLAN 30, this will become the non-designated or the blocking port. Similarly, for switch B, this will become the designated port, right? This will become the designated port and this will be having a different blocking port. So this way, I can perform load balancing across multiple VLANs. Because both will be having VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 are having the individual topologies and they will be having a different blocking or a non-designated port, right? So what are the disadvantages as the number of VLAN increases the spanning tree instance will be increasing which is increase the CPU and memory and which will definitely affect the switch performance that is the disadvantage of PVST and advantage already told you it performs a load balancing across different VLANs. How we can configure PVSTs go to the switch configuration mode and specify spanning tree mode PVST. Now let us understand the PVST summaries PVST is Cisco proprietary and for PVST is a per VLAN spanning tree protocol. So for each and every VLAN, a separate instance of STP will be running, which will definitely increase the CPU and memory and which will also affect the switch performance. And the advantage of PVST is only one advantage is it performs a load balancing across different VLAN. And how to configure is configure in the configuration mode, spanning tree mode PVST. So this is how PVST work. I am going to show how to configure PVST. Hi, now let us see how to configure PVST on all these three switches, right? So before that, I have connected three switches. All these three switches are connected means of a trunk link. And I have configured two VLANs, VLAN 30 and VLAN 40. So VLAN 30, I have configured this switch as a root switch. And VLAN 40, I have configured switch B as a root switch. And for VLAN 30, this will be the corresponding designated port. Similarly, for VLAN 40, this will become the designated port. So both will be having separate blocking port. For VLAN 30, this will become the blocking port and for VLAN 40, this will become the blocking port. In this way, I can perform load balancing across two different VLANs. So that is the advantage of PBST. It always performs load balancing across two different VLANs. So now let us go to the individual switches and I am going to show how to configure PBST. So before that, what we can do, let us go to the individual switches and configure the PBST mode. So spanning tree mode PBST. And similarly, go to this switch and configure the PVST mode. Go to configuration mode, spanning tree mode, PVST. So I configure the second switch. Similarly, go to the switch C and configure that as a PVST, spanning tree mode, PVST. That is the configuration for enabling PVST. So also I have configured HSRP for VLAN 30 and 40. So this is an active router. This is a standby router for HSRP and this will be in the listening stage. So let us go to the individual switch and check a show standby brief. So VLAN 30 and VLAN 40, this will become the active and this will become the standby, right? So let us go here, show standby brief. So this will become the standby. 
So this will be in active for VLAN 30 and 40 and this will be in standby mode and this will be in the listening stage. And also the second thing, I have configured the entire switch by means of a trunk link. And also I configured PVST and all these switches. So now the fourth thing what I am going to do, I am going to configure VLAN 30 for this root switch, right? So how to do that? I have to configure with the lowest priority. So let us go to this individual switch and configure the spanning tree protocol. Spanning tree and VLAN 30. I am going to set the priorities 4096. That means this will be this switch will be elected as a root switch for VLAN 30. Similarly, go to the switch B and configure VLAN 40 with the lowest priority. So spanning tree VLAN 40, the priority will be 4096. So these are the configuration I need to do. First, I have configured all the switches as a trunk link, then enable PVST and all the switches. And for VLAN, inter-VLAN communication, I configure this as an active and the standby. I configure HSRP. So one will be an active, this is in standby, and the remaining router will be in the listening stage, right? And then I configure PVST on all the switches. And fourth thing, I configure the individual root switches. This switch I make as a root for VLAN. 30 right and this switch B I have configured as a root switch for VLAN 40. So both will be having an individual topology. So for VLAN 30 it will be having individual topology. So for VLAN 30 this is a spanning tree topology. So it will be both the ports will be the designated port and this is a blocking port for VLAN 30. And for VLAN 40 this both ports will become the designated port and this will become the blocking port. So in this way I can perform load balancing and there are two hosts I have connected. This is in VLAN 30 that is 30.6 is the IP. And this is in VLAN 40, that is 40.7. So in this way, I can perform load balancing across two different VLAN. So now let us see the topologies. So go to the switch A and check the show spanning tree VLAN 30. So what it does, it will show the designated, right? So first port and the second port I configured as a designated port. Since this is a root switch for VLAN 30, similarly go to the switch 1 and check the corresponding VLAN topology. Show spanning tree VLAN 40, right? So the corresponding port will become the designated port. So this is the blocking port for VLAN 30, right? This is a VLAN 30. So we can check the VLAN 30. This will become the blocking port. That alternate port we call it as a blocking port. This is in blocking port. And similarly, go to the switch C and check the for VLAN 40, right? This is in VLAN 40. So let us see which is the blocking port. Show spanning tree VLAN 40. So it will show alternate if, if, if first Ethernet 0 by 2 will be the blocking port that is showing as the alternate port, right? So this will be in the blocking port. So now what we can do, we can check the host to host communication. So go to this individual host. So the second host 192.168.40.7. So I'm able to ping the IP, right? So we are able to ping the both the hosts 30.6. So both the hosts I am able to ping, right? Similarly, go to this host and check the host to host communication. So both are different VLAN. Go to this host, ping 192.168.30.6 and the second host is 40.7. So both the, both the host ID I am able to ping, right? So now what I am going to do, so I, let us shut down this port. This is in blocking port, right? So let us shut down this port and let us see the VLAN communication is working fine. So we need to check whether the PVST is load balancing properly across two different VLAN. So I'm going to shut down this root port. So what we can do, this port is, is faster than at one, right? So let us go to the switch B and go to the configuration mode and interface faster than at zero by one. Let us shut down this port. So once I shut down this port, what happened? This will become the blocking. So what happened immediately the traffic will be forwarded for both VLAN 30 and VLAN 40. So there will be no disruption in the traffic. Traffic. So let us go to the individual host and ping the both the IPs. So 30.6 is the host A and let, let us check the host B similarly. So we are able to ping. So there is no disruption in the traffic. Similarly go to this host and check the both the VLANs 30.6 and the second one is 40.7 so in this way i can perform the load balancing so the similar way if i'm shutting down this port also this root port similar way the traffic will not get disturbed in both the vlan able to communicate with each other so in this way i can perform load balancing across multiple vlan right? so i configure two different vlan so this we become the root switch for vlan 30 and this will become the root switch for VLAN 40. So both will be having different blocking ports. So as I told already, 
I can also configure VLAN 30 and 40 as a root switch here. But the only issue is if I'm using any expensive link, so we are not going to utilize this link for a longer time. So this will become the blocking for both the VLAN. So to avoid such situation, so VLAN 30 I configured this as this root switch and VLAN 40 I configured switch B as a root switch. So both the switch will be having individual different spanning tree topologies and it will perform the load balancing. So that is the main benefit of PVST. It performs load balancing across two different VLAN and the disadvantage is if the number of VLAN increases, it is going to increase the CPU and memory which will definitely affect the switch performance. I hope you understood. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe me for more videos. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.